Hey guys, uh, for today's episode of my Vlogtober series whilst I'm in Thailand, uh, I thought I'd address something that you guys always keep asking on my Instagram comments, and that is how do I edit my photos? So I'm gonna quickly run through um, just the process on one of my images. It's actually very different to how I used to edit photos now that I use Lightroom 100% of the time. So let's dive straight into Lightroom and I'll show you how it goes. So after I've imported all of my photos into various projects and stuff, I will then look through the images and rate them based on the quality. So if it's got motion blur or anything, then obviously it gets rejected. I generally don't delete anything. I just rate them with star ratings of one, two, three, four, all the way up to five. So I've got this image here. So I'm gonna have a crack at editing. And I've rated this as a three star. So this is kind of what I'd class as like a standard image for me really. And the first thing I'll do is create a virtual copy. So command apostrophe is the shortcut for that. And then we head over to our develop module. And this is the window that will make adjustments for how things look and work. So you may actually be aware of VSEO uh, as an app on your iPhone, but did you know that it actually started as a series of presets to emulate old film stock? Um, so I've actually got a few installed on here and I really enjoy using them. Um, it's very similar to the old days of picking and choosing your various film for your 35mm camera. And it's a way of just kind of getting a tonal curve based set of colors that you can use to apply to your images. Um, some people will like to tell you that that's not a great way to edit photos, but I actually find it's a great way as a base to start editing your photos. So take what you will from it, but essentially they're just a series of presets. So I found that the Kodak Portrait series is probably one of my most used. Um, in fact, it's pretty much all I use when I'm editing images. And you'll notice that as soon as I click it, it will apply a subtle change to the image as soon as you've used it. So we've just got some slight shifting in the colors here. And these color adjustments are made depending on your camera make. So each camera will interpret colors differently and the presets just emulate those colors so they're uniform together. If I use it on a Sony or a Canon, it's gonna get the same results. So I just select through a few of these and there's a couple that I kind of use a lot and one of them is the Kodak Portra 400 Plus. If we just take this as a base set for our image and then in the right hand side, we go over to our develop module. I can then start to play around with the exposure uh, bearing in mind this is from a raw file so I can edit everything completely post taking the photo. So I can adjust my exposure on things, I can adjust my contrast and various other stuff. Uh, so first of all, I am actually quite happy with how this looks. Let me just turn my histogram on. So we can see that it's heavy on the shadows over here. Um, and if I drop this down you'll see it goes way over to the left. So I'm quite happy with my exposure. It's generally quite dark in this wooded area anyway. Uh, I don't like to add too much contrast to my images. So I'm gonna go for like a plus two, three or something like that. But what I usually do is drop my highlights down uh, and raise my shadows up a bit. And then if I drop the black point, you'll see that all the black parts of the image start to adjust, and raise my white point. That is essentially a bit like doing some contrast, you're just raising the whites, lowering the blacks. Your clarity is kind of like a sharpness and contrast combined. Uh, again, I don't like to overdo this at all. If anything, I may actually drop the clarity just a little bit. On this image, I think we're okay at around plus five, plus six. Now the vibrance and saturation, this is mainly color related. So you'll see that if I whack it all the way up, we start to get crazy vibrant images. I don't want to do that way too much. Uh, you'll find that if you're playing with these, you can overdo this all the time. This is one of the top things that most people would do when they're editing images for the first time. Um, so I'm actually gonna leave my saturation kind of around the zero mark-ish. Now we come down to our tone curve. Now this is where the presets have come in handy. So it's already uh, applied a slight tonal curve to the images, and you can see that was already there. I'm actually gonna adjust it a little bit further. So what I love to do is just bring the black point up to kind of like a dark gray. So if you imagine this is black and black and this is white and white over here, by raising the black point up towards the white, you're kind of creating anything that's black within here becomes a gray. And if you went that way, anything that's black or white becomes darker. 
Um, so you need to play around with curves just to get your head around it and stuff. And I can just drop the sort of darker areas of the shadows, just to make them a little bit darker. And as you adjust it, you can sort of play around with your saturation, uh, sorry, not your saturation, your contrast and the points of your highlights and your shadows within here. Um, you can go crazy on it, but it's actually good practice to kind of be very subtle in your tweaks. And all the while I'm doing these, I can press the backslash key and I can see the original image and the new image. So you see it's kind of going towards that soft sort of fade look um, with the image. It's not, not too contrasty, not too punchy. It's just kind of a little bit mystical. And then when we come down to our hue saturation luminance, uh, in this image, I can see there's already a lot of green involved. Um, and there's a lot of browns and stuff and I may actually want to just punch the greens up a little bit more So if I click on this button here, I can then select certain areas of the image and you'll see it's highlighting over in the right side Which of those is toggling? So if I just click and drag It's increasing the saturation. I can go crazy to the right and you see all the greens have gone mental So let's just set this to a little bit higher than what it was previously uh, I think we're okay with that. And then our highlights and shadows section here, this is where you can apply a certain color to the highlights and shadows of your image. So again, you set this with a saturation. Uh, I generally don't like to go too high on this, somewhere around four to seven, something like that. And then you'll notice that as I move this, the uh, hue slider, it will change the overall tone of the shadows within the image. So if we want like a cooler image, we can put this over a bluey to purpley kind of shade. If we want it to be a bit warmer, we can put it over a yellow to an orangey shade, something like that. Uh, I'm kind of steering towards a cooler type of image. So I'm gonna go for the bluey sort of shadows. And then for the highlights, I'm only gonna add a little bit. So like a two or three or something. And I'm gonna make the highlights slightly warmer around a yellow sort of area. You can always toggle these on and off. And you can see it's kind of cooled the image just a little bit. Uh, in fact, I'm gonna go back to the top and I'm gonna just play around with the white balance slightly. Adjust the temperature. Um, just warm it up a little bit. And potentially add a little bit more magenta. Just to see how the image is looking there. And I think at this stage, I may actually do a bit more contrast. So you'll see that as I'm going through the edit, I'm constantly going back and forth um, throughout all of the settings. Um, at some point, I'm gonna to need to add some sharpening, but I don't wanna do that just yet because it actually slows down your processor because once you do your sharpening and then you start making color adjustments, it has to continually keep doing those color adjustments as well as the sharpening and other things. So I generally do that last. Uh, I'm actually just gonna raise the exposure back up a little bit. Drop the shadows. So you may actually find that as I go through the edit, I completely change where my initial setup went. So I don't necessarily have the same setup for every image. It's always an experimentation, always playing around, seeing how it works. Um, and you'll find that after you've done your color adjustments, that's when you may want to come back and do other things. So I'm just going to play around with these and just tinker about a little bit. And I'm going to concentrate on this rather than talking. So I've just gone through and I've made some more adjustments and finer tweaks to things. And now I'm at a stage where I wanna sharpen my image. So I bring my sharpening fairly high, to be honest, um, around 40 to 60, somewhere in that sort of region. Uh, the radii is where uh, the spacing around each pixel that you want to actually apply sharpening to. And then masking, if we hold down option, you have to see what masking does. It applies it only to certain edges within your image or it applies it to more areas of your image. So generally raise the masking to around the midpoint um, so it's not overly sharpening everything. And then fine tune the detail. Again, doing adjustments like this can add noise and grain to your image. So you have to kind of be careful with things. And likewise, you can then do your noise reduction. Uh, this image is fairly okay. Can zoom in at 
and I can see what adjustments I need to make. Drop my smoothness, I don't want it to be coming out a bit wishy-washy. And now if we do remove chromatic aberration, that is a purple fringing when you take a photo into direct sunlight, and then profile corrections, this will take the profiles of your camera and your lens as Lightroom knows it and it will correct it. So if you've got distortion in your imagery, vignetting around the corners and stuff like that, uh, Lightroom has presets for most major cameras and lenses so you can correct those and get your image looking nice and as your eye would see it. Let me go into transform, hit auto and that will correct any sort of vertical lines and adjustments within your image and any horizons that maybe aren't straight. Sometimes it doesn't work that well and you may have to manually do it. This has actually worked quite well. Fairly pleased with that. If you do want to make adjustments, make sure you tick constrain crop so that it doesn't leave any white spaces around your edge. I'm just going to drop my grain. I don't like that very high at all. And go back over through all of the adjustments again just generally see how it's looking. Um, and then toggle with your backslash between before and after. And we've got that nice sort of silvery touch on the leaves. Yeah, so I think we're looking all right for this. Uh, as I said, this is kind of like a standard photo, but I'll generally put this sort of effort into the majority of the imagery. And then when I'm happy with a set of adjustments, if you do Command-Shift-C, you can copy those settings. Go to your next image that is taken at the same place. What is going on here? Create a virtual copy. And then Command-Shift-V, you can paste those adjustments and then you can make further tweaks and you can just kind of keep a systematic theme to all of your image edits. And we can just update your transform on the new uh, data from this image or likewise you can select with command in your thumbnail tray and you can auto sync your images and then you can fine tune them afterwards. Once I'm happy with an image I'll then right click go to export and I've actually set up a few different export presets that go into particular folders within Finder that I can then pick up on my phone to share on Instagram. So I'll show you that if we go into the export window this is what my Instagram looks like. So it actually goes into my Dropbox, into a Photos folder and then Lightroom. Um, I'll put it into a subfolder called Instagram. The files are then renamed by reverse date and then the original file number. And then if I've titled the image, that appears afterwards as well. I will keep the file quality to 100% and I'll set the maximum size to 2000. So Instagram actually resizes to 1080. Um, so 2000 is perfect size if I wanna zoom in when I'm on my phone and I will hit export. And then when I go onto my phone, I can pick that up in Dropbox and I can then go straight into Instagram and post that image. So that is a very quick run through of editing my images. And if you enjoyed this video, then go and check out my Instagram where I'll have these images posted and let me know what you think of it. And if you've got your own tips on how to get your images from your Lightroom into your phone, then let me know in the comments below. All right, so thanks for watching guys. And I'll see you again tomorrow for another episode of Vlogtober. Catch you later. Bye-bye. This is an incredible place.